Welcome to my All About series, where once again I spend 5 minutes or less rambling on about a chosen subject. Feel free to suggest a subject in the comments below. If this sort of thing floats your boat, then why not check out the Enclosed Ecology Discord, link in the description below. This one is all about copepods. The first known fossils of copepods date back approximately 300 million years in the late Carboniferous period, but research points that the copepod originated in the Cambrian period, around 540 to 488 million years ago. A copepod is taxonomically classified as a crustacean in the subclass Copepoda, and around 14,000 species of copepod have been described and documented, most of which are marine but they are found almost everywhere there is water, salty or otherwise. When we think of copepods, which I'm sure many of you do, we think of the tiny creatures that live in the ponds and water butts. But the largest one, Panella balanoptera, can be as much as 32 centimeters in length and spends its time as a parasite on a fin whale. The smallest copepod is minute and may only reach 0.1 millimetres in length and again it is a parasite that lives on marine ostracods. And if they was watching this video, I'm sure they would subscribe and click the little bell icon so they don't miss my next enthralling episode of All About. They are quite easy to spot due to their cylindrical segmented bodies with numerous appendages on the head and thorax and two cytosocardial rami on the arse end of the abdomen, or sticky out bits as they're commonly known to six year olds. They are in the phylum Arthropoda and possess an exoskeleton which means they molt like many insects before moving on to the next life stage or instar. Their life starts off as an egg and passes through 12 life stages thereafter, six as Norplia and six as copepodid stages the last stage being the adult. Adults are almost always sexually dimorphic, meaning that the male and female are visually different. Females are usually larger than the males. Sexy time for copepods is a dull affair. The male will place a single leaky sperm packet on the female's abdomen that slowly enters her body through the opening vent, and it is stored in special sacs. The eggs are then fertilized and carried by the female in more sacs that are attached to the abdomen. Some copepods have no sexy time at all and rely on parthenogenesis to reproduce, producing exact clones of their mothers. Remember, always look at the mother first if you want to know what you're getting. In freshwater environments, copepods have evolved to use different tactics. Some adopt a more planktonic life, floating around in the open water whilst others live on submerged plants and in the substrate and sediments of the bottom. And some are parasitic and prey on fish and mollusks. They are known to harbour infectious diseases in humans and other animals, including cholera. That's nice. Some are also host to such delights as flukes, nematodes and tapeworms. Daphnia is often found alongside copepods in fresh water and are often mistaken for them. Daphnia are in fact Brachiopoda in the subclass Phyllopodia. I thought that was obvious. These are also of great interest to anybody fascinated by copepods. Small world isn't it? Copepods are extremely beneficial to waterways providing food and nutrition to many water-dwelling creatures such as fish and whales if your pond is large enough. These little warriors also help to keep water clean, grazing on phytoplankton and bacteria and are frequently used in the aquarium hobby as a cheap way to keep your fish tank spick and span. And that's all I have to say about copepods at this time. Thanks for watching. <laughs>